But um, what I what I can say about this is that in our era, you know, which is a scientific materialist era, what we're seeing is we're seeing um, our cosmos, which is a spiritual cosmos um, that functions in according to spiritual laws. We're seeing it actually be described more and more as though it's a computer system. Have you guys noticed that? Have you guys noticed that, you know, in modern spirituality and even in science, the cosmos and even the human being is being described more and more as though it's a computer system and it's becoming more and more inhuman and the humanness is being removed from the cosmos. So let me contrast this a little bit with traditional esoterica um, that would be our ancestral esoterica. So, you know, for example, I'll use the Western tradition. So in the Western tradition, the cosmos is made up of hierarchies of angels or the angelic hierarchies. Um, in the Christian tradition, this would be called the angelic hierarchies. In anthroposophy, it's called the spiritual hierarchies. Um, in the in Jewish mysticism, um, I think they call it in English would be the choirs of angels. And so in in these systems that are you know were leading the charge up to about a hundred years ago, um, the human being was not separated from the cosmos at all. And the idea was was that um, the human form is actually the tenth. Um, hierarchy of angels and that as we move down in density as we move down in matter there's a specific human form for the cosmos that is the embodiment of the angelic hierarchies for that level of density and that's how the universe was created so there's a human form for every density essentially and that human form is representing the uh a certain hierarchy of development, if you will. And so this is obvious also in anthroposophy when, you know, Rudolf Steiner describes the creation of Saturn, the creation of sun and moon and the planetary spheres. And it's very clear that very high spiritual beings sacrificed their essence and their force in order for a planetary sphere at our 3D level to be created or at the 4D level to be created. So everything that we see that exists in the cosmos is because a higher spiritual being from the hierarchy of angels or the spiritual hierarchies has sacrificed themselves for that to exist, including stars. And that's one of the mysteries of Golgotha is, you know, you have Christ who then takes on the sun. And in reality, our sun is already a being. And so Saturn is a being. You know, Venus is a being, the sun is a being, because there's a human consciousness, uh, albeit if you're at the level of initiation where you're taking on the form of a planet or you're entering into the planet. And, and, and by the way, this entering into the center of a planet initiation is very clear in the Hindu material of Sunat Kumara, who is the initiate from Venus that takes on the ego of the earth. I think it's also called the Lord of Karma. This also happens with Christ. Christ enters the center of the earth. The spirit becomes the spirit of the earth. So this is a deep, 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 deep uh, mystery knowledge that has to do with human initiation in the solar system, human development in the solar system through taking on the planetary energies. Um, and uh, it's how we are initiated actually out of physical form as well. And so we don't hear anything about that with these new theories like simulation theory or even a lot of law of attraction information. You know, it's sort of like the universe is a catalog that you just select what you want out of it and it just appears, you know, or it's this machine, it's this neutral machine that, that it just processes birth and death and reincarnation. And these ideologies are actually closer to the eighth sphere in reality. They're inhuman. There, there's not a lot of humanness left in them. There, there's no talk about spiritual initiation traditionally, how it should be spoken about. Um, and so there's this loss of humanity. And because the human being is the 10th angel in the hierarchy of angels, 
Um, there's also the loss of the angels and there's also the loss of the spiritual masters and this great hierarchy of spiritual beings that is responsible for all human development that we are a part of, that we, um, you know, even, even going into the reality that when you get to a certain level of initiation, these higher spiritual beings that are at the level of angel, but they're an individual, um, like masters can enter into your field and can enter into your aura and they'll speak through you. And, it, and you um, can go through various different mergings with these high spiritual deities that completely change you um, and evolve you into that level yourself. You rise to that level yourself through this very important process of cosmic initiation with masters and with these various different higher human beings. Now we're looking at the cosmos and it's a bunch of chimeric alien beings that have half human, half animal forms. Um, uh, they look like divergent human beings. These are now gods. These are now the individuals who have created us. There's no mention of how we actually evolve in the cosmos, how the plane of initiation is not discussed. It's just initiation has become hybridization. You know, if you look at the main lore, how human beings allegedly evolve is through genetically splicing them with with gray aliens or beings that look like gray aliens or aliens. You know, we are so far from home on this in the world. We are so far from reality that it is, it's getting bizarre. So with simulation theory, there are some things that I think can work. Um, for example, the planet Saturn um, does have an effect of projecting certain forces onto humanity, certain streams of consciousness, actually all planets do. So in a way, the earth is a projection of the sun and all planets. This is why astrology works. But it's not correct to say that it's just a simulation or it's just planets, because again, as I've mentioned earlier, every planet is a being, okay? And, um, eventually maybe one day we'll get to the point where we can become the spirit of a planet where we can become the spirit of the earth and so there really is no talking about the cosmos about the sun or about fixed stars or about planetary spheres unless you're talking about the development of humanity and the development of the human form there just isn't and that is where modern spirituality and i think science is trying to go it's trying to leave the human being behind and human development behind and create a character a caricature a garish bizarre caricature of small pieces of the story